Okay, I think we're going to get started. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, this is part of the CS seminar series, and uh, I'm very pleased to um, introduce Professor Sewan Bak today. He's a visitor who's visiting here from Seoul University, National University, and he'll be here for uh, a couple of weeks. So if any of you are interested in connecting with him afterwards, if you're interested in this particular topic or in anything related to networks, and he just said he does work in networks and AI, um, I'd be happy to um, set you up with him or um, um, set up some appointments with him. Okay, so um, let me just give a brief a bio, and then we'll let Professor Bach get started. And the talk is usually 50 minutes, and at the end we have 10 minutes of open questions. So uh, we'll let that. All right, so would you like to take questions during the talk or after the Say well. Um, it doesn't matter, actually. Okay. Um, so you're open to questions during yeah, the talk? Okay. okay. All right. So Professor Bach received his BS and MS degrees in electrical engineering from Seoul National University um, in 1984-86, respectively, and then his PhD degree from the University of Pennsylvania in 1991. He was actually my PhD student, and he wrote one of the first thesis on the um, dynamic routing in the, in the internet at that time. So um, then he worked with um, he worked with at t Bell Labs till on till 1994, and then he moved to um, Korea and rejoined Seoul National University as a professor. Um, he's had a fairly active uh, played an active role in the IEEE community. He was a TPC chair for IEEE Vehicular Technology Conference. Um, he was the general chair for the IEEE WCNC conference in 2020. He is uh, on the ed editorial board of several of the journals, and he is also president of the Korean Institute of Communications and Information Sciences. So, and he's also a member of the National Academy of Engineering in Korea. So, Bach, please. Okay, uh, thank you, Martha, for the nice introduction. Press the button. Oh, okay. okay, I repeat again. Uh, thanks for the nice introduction, Martha. Uh, actually, I uh, was the uh, first student of Margaret, so uh, we are getting old together, so uh, time uh, That's right, it was my right. first PhD student, yeah. Yeah, right. So this is my first time to visit California in springtime. Uh, it looks very different. Uh, I can see many green grass and uh, <laughs> nice forest. I usually came here like summertime and winter time. Uh, the, everything looks like uh, brownie. So, uh, I like the spring season in California. I will be here again uh, if possible. Okay, uh, today I'm going to talk about the uh, protocol issue, that is like the fundamental issue. Many people, medical person, uh, use the AI technology. I also have AI technology, but today I just focus on the uh, fundamental IoT uh, protocol issues because this is the baseline of my knowledge. Okay, today I'm going to talk about the co-located protocol aided performance enhancement in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi network. This is joint work with uh, Won Bin Park. He was my PhD student, now working for uh, Samsung, and Changi Zhu, he is he works for the, uh, my uh, uh, PhD student before. Okay, uh, nowadays it is becoming popular to use the uh, multi protocol IoT stack, Wi Fi and Bluetooth, and Zigbee. I'm also working on the Zigbee and LoRa and several other MD IoT team. I'm working on those two. Uh, Bluetooth and Wi Fi are the most popular uh, IoT communication uh, devices, uh, particularly the smartphone use the Bluetooth and Wi Fi, not uh, Zigbee and the uh, access point, Wi-Fi access point is with Bluetooth these days uh, for the, uh, the various reasons. So in this book, I'm going to talk about the cooperation between co-located uh, IoT protocol stack, particularly Wi-Fi and uh, Bluetooth. Uh, that will give the great potential uh, to improve the network performance. This talk uh, consists of uh, two parts. Uh, part one has been uh, published in, uh, two years ago. Uh, this is the uh, 
this is the term like black for BLE 86 Wi Fi scan. The when a station joins the Wi Fi network, you need association. Uh, before the association, uh, you need to check which Wi Fi are allowed. So, uh, to get that information, you need scan. And there are two types of scanning uh, passive scanning and uh, active scanning. I'm going to talk about later again. Station start Wi Fi scanning uh, to get the best AP uh, for its purpose. Uh, then uh, for the scanning purpose, it takes some time because there are tens of Wi-Fi channels, and uh, the station does not have does not have any information about which AP is on which uh, channel. So you need to try the uh, tens of channels to get that information. It takes some time. So in in the lab, uh, we will. Uh, minimize, the, minimize the scanning time. And in part two, uh, that is called the B hub, uh, become aware dynamic uh, Bluetooth uh, frequency hub. Uh, become aware means that Bluetooth and uh, Wi Fi are competing in the online test band. Uh, the Wi Fi use 100 times stronger uh, transmission power compared to the uh, Bluetooth. Whenever they are competing, always Bluetooth will be looted. So Bluetooth need to avoid Wi-Fi signal uh, to get the uh, desired performance. So in part two, uh, Bluetooth will have the uh, good set of uh, frequency hopping set to avoid the Wi-Fi beacons. That is the purpose of the uh, b -hop. Okay. So this is a part one, a blast. The part two has not been published yet. Uh, that is very uh, recent work, actually. The Wi-Fi scanning, as I mentioned, uh, there are two types of uh, uh, Wi-Fi scanning. And uh, to search for the neighboring APs, the station needs to uh, scan the, uh, all the channels. Uh, there is no prior knowledge about the APs and about the Wi-Fi channels. Uh, there are 11 channels in 2.4 analysis band. Uh, and 12, 21 uh, channels in uh, 5 gigahertz analysis band. So the, as the uh, Bluetooth use the uh, 2.4 uh, gigahertz band, uh, the Wi-Fi and um, the Bluetooth need to uh, cooperate in the 2.4 gigahertz band. Okay, uh, there are two types of Wi-Fi scanning, legacy active scanning and legacy passive scanning. Active scanning means the station, uh, when the station wants to join the network, it scans the APs, nearby APs, uh, by active scanning, Send, by sending the probe request. When the AP receives the probe request, it responds with the probe response. Uh, each AP just responds after like a uh, random amount of time. Uh, if they respond together, that will be the like, collision of uh, response. So each AP needs to spend a little bit of time uh, to provide the proper response. Okay, so the uh, channel by channel active scanning uh, will be done and uh, for the passive scanning, the station just wait until the AP sends the beacon. The beacon is sent every 100 seconds like that, 102 seconds. So just wait for the beacon is coming and the channel by channel. It takes more time, it takes more time, uh, but less energy. And uh, active scanning uh, generate more traffic. So uh, there is some pros and cons. So many uh, devices use passive scanning to save its energy. Okay, a station wait for the uh, uh, APs uh, beacon and then uh, find the best, which one is the best uh, for communication and association. If station knows the beacon transmission time in advance, uh, it can save the uh, waiting time, channel by channel, and then waiting for a beacon signal. It takes lots of time, um, but if the uh, station knows the beacon's time in a 
the event, uh, it can minimize the waiting time. Uh, use the uh, call locate the BLE uh, function. So in the uh, BLE framework, uh, we assume that uh, Wi-Fi and BLE are co-located. Uh, that is a very popular these days. And uh, the beacon information, uh, beacon means the Wi-Fi signal on every 100 milliseconds. Uh, beacon information will be piggybacked on uh, BLE advertising packet. BLE use uh, two types of packet. One is the advertising and one is for the data uh, communication. Uh, the beacon information will be piggybacked on uh, BLE advertising packet. And uh, from this, uh, the collected information, um, the uh, station will decide the scanning, uh, scanning a sequence, channel scanning sequence to minimize the total uh, scanning time. So which channel uh, is needed to be deleted to minimize the, uh, uh, the scanning delay? So that is the purpose of this one. Okay, uh, for the AP side, uh, AP, uh, it will generate the beacon and the station side, uh, it will get the uh, Wi-Fi beacon and then also it will get the um, really packet, advertisement packet. In this slide, uh, there are three uh, APs and then each AP generate the beacon signal every 100 seconds. There is no coordination between APs, just uh, individually they are working. And uh, the BLE uh, use the, uh, the three control channels uh, for advertising uh, packet, uh, channel 37, 38, 39. They are not neighbor, they are just a bit apart uh, to uh, have the different channel characteristic uh, for the BA communication. Okay. And then the frequency hopping is working here uh, for the BA communication. Okay. The BA advertising packet will contain the uh, beacon information. So the uh, beacons, uh, the trend, uh, past transmission time, and then uh, elapsed time. This is the BLE packet. So when the BLE packet is sent, like this one, uh, it knows that, uh, the device knows that uh, when was the last time uh, the, uh, the Wi-Fi beacon has been transmitted. So the elapsed time. This is the time gap between these two. The last time uh, is the, uh, the basic information to understand the when will be the next uh, beacon will come. So it will be used for the uh, uh, predicting the next beacon signal. Okay, the elapsed time and the beacon interval and beacon duration. Uh, beacon interval is like 1 millisecond and the beacon duration is like 2 millisecond. If there are tens of uh, uh, Wi-Fi APs, like up to 40% of the, the wireless channel uh, can be used for the just beacon, not for communication. So that is uh, reality in these days. Okay. For the station side, um, the station will get the, uh, the uh, beacon uh, signal from the Wi-Fi and then it will also get the uh, Bluetooth signal from that it has been sent from the, uh, the Wi-Fi APs. Okay, station start to Wi-Fi channel scanning uh, to have the association uh, with new AP. And uh, here the um, one indicate the beacon uh, right after the, uh, the starting the scanning, the, uh, the AP1 uh, beacon will be received. And then by switching to like channel 36, uh, the previous channel is channel one, by switching to the 36, another beacon will be received. And then switching to 
the uh, channel 11, then it's 2.4 gigahertz band. Uh, there is the next beacon. So by doing this, the station can finish the Wi-Fi channel scanning. So without this kind of setage, just spend like 100 milliseconds per channel uh, for the uh, association uh, to find to find the uh, best AP. Uh, okay, this is the uh, short scanning delay, and uh, the most of the time we spend the implementation of this protocol step uh, on the, uh, the uh, implementation of packet. Okay, time synchronization is uh, the most important thing that we have to consider. Uh, there are uh, uncontrollable uh, transmission times at the BAD site for the BAD advertisement uh, uh, packet. Uh, the, uh, it needs to be, it needs to be synchronized. And in BAD site, the BAD controller and the uh, BAD controller interface are working. Uh, BAD controller is, is like hardware part for the BAD and uh, uh, BAD uh, the controller uh, interface is the software OM uh, firmware. It causes some delay and uh, it needs to be synchronized and then uh, for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth cooperation. And also there is some uh, delay of uh, sending the BRE advertising packet, transport delay and transmission delay. So this kind of delay uh, should be considered uh, in implementation. And then from these, the, we can find the optimize the uh, channel scanning sequence. Also, we need to use the low complexity uh, uh, algorithm. Uh, one thing that we have to consider here is that uh, channel switching, uh, there will be a channel switching, uh, Wi-Fi channel to another Wi-Fi channel. If the channel switch happens in the same 2.4 gigahertz band, uh, it's like less than one millisecond. But the channel switch happens between different bands, uh, 2.4 gigahertz band to like a five gigahertz band, it takes uh, four milliseconds for channel switching. So the channel switching requires different time according to the uh, the uh, switching band. Uh, Within the same band, it takes less than one millisecond, but in a different band, uh, we say RO band, it takes uh, four milliseconds or something. So we tested this on the uh, Arthur's uh, chair, and then we uh, found that there is some variation uh, in switching delay. And this kind of thing should be considered um, in real algorithm. Okay, uh, four times longer switching delay in uh, um, between the uh, different uh, band switching. Okay, uh, the optimizing uh, channel sequencing, uh, channel scanning sequencing. Okay, this uh, trigger scanning start here, trigger uh, channel scanning uh, trigger start here, and then uh, switch to the. AP4 channel 40 different band and then uh, switching back to the channel one and uh, channel uh, 36 and uh, channel six like that. Okay, so the different channel is like this one to minimize the uh, total scanning delay. But due to the uh, channel switching delay, some switching is not allowed. As I mentioned, uh, in different uh, band switching, it requires like four milliseconds or something. So the shortest uh, difference is not the best choice. We need to allow some switching delay here uh, for the uh, uh, scanning sequence uh, choice. Okay, so. so to find the optimum uh, channel uh, scanning sequence, uh, we need to run some algorithm. Uh, we did not uh, design the, this algorithm. We just adopted the uh, traveling sales uh, mental problem. Uh, this is very well known, uh, and this is like an NPR problem. And uh, there are several uh, intuitively very uh, uh, low complexity.
complex algorithm, we are just adapt that. Okay. Uh, there are uh, four APs here. Um, the, the between uh, switching AP1 to AP3, uh, the C13 indicates the uh, delay uh, for the channel switching between uh, AP1s and um, AP3. Okay. Uh, here the, uh, the delay gap the delay uh, gap is like a C minus A. C is the uh, beacon time of AP3, and the A is the beacon time of AP1. C minus A. We want to have this uh, transition, like B minus A, but uh, due to the channel switching delay, uh, this is not allowed. It looks like best choice, but it is not allowed. So B minus A is not allowed. The best <coughs> Uh, difference is in C minus A. Uh, like this, we can create the delay cost uh, matrix, okay? And then uh, we will find the best uh, route, best channel switching sequence. Okay, for the finding the optimum uh, channel uh, scanning sequence, we try the uh, just uh, the previously uh, proposed the heuristic algorithm. Uh, first come, first serve, and nearest neighbor, and three out. These are the uh, very popular and fundamental uh, the traveling uh, salesman uh, problem algorithm. Okay? Uh, complexity is different. N is the number of nodes. Here, the AP. AP is the uh, number of AP is the, uh, the complexity uh, dimension. Okay, uh, the uh, first come first serve, just this is like uh, the minimum, minimum uh, switching delay. Uh, it will choose just minimum uh, switching delay uh, transition. Okay, and in case of the nearest neighbor, we change the starting node, starting node, starting AP, that means, and then choose the best starting node that is the nearest neighbor in case of the 3R, just by removing uh, three transition marks and then find the best route and then compare to the existing one like that. So this is MP problem. So this is one of the simple, uh, just heuristic algorithm. Okay, so, so we try the, these uh, three cases, but it does not make much difference in performance gap. Just we just try it. Uh, we just focus on our uh, contribution. Okay, we implemented this one on the uh, uh, Asterisk 9K and uh, uh, Bluetooth uh, Nordic, uh, we use the uh, Nordic uh, development kit, uh, kit uh, for the Bluetooth uh, development. Okay, this is the uh, <coughs> performance evaluation uh, scanning delay. Uh, we compared to the just legacy active scanning and the, the legacy task scanning, and we tried various version of the uh, the blast sync. Uh, that is our proposal. And the BSE is the uh, blast sync with the exhaust. This is the optimum uh, sequencing, uh, optimum sequencing for uh, channel scanning. Okay. We try to uh, compare the uh, various uh, algorithms here, and uh, compared to the conventional one, we could uh, reduce uh, forty-seven percent or eighty percent, eighty percent of the uh, scanning delay. And uh, uh, the basic reason is that uh, we could uh, skip the channel with no AP, and then we could find the uh, good uh, channel. Uh, scanning sequence, that is the, uh, the reason that we can find the uh, good performance. Energy consumption, uh, the legacy, legacy, uh, legacy active scanning, legacy active scanning and uh, legacy passive scanning, uh, the, they show the different energy consumption and in case of uh, active scanning, it generates lots of uh, scanning packet. It consumes uh, 
how much of the uh, the wife's bandwidth so that is the disadvantage of using new access channels. And VSN3, that is the our proposal that used the uh, nearest the neighbor plus opposite state that combination. Okay, we could reduce the uh, energy consumption uh, of and this is, has been found through the experiment. Uh, for extensive uh, uh, comparison, we use the simulation uh, and uh, large scale network uh, up to like uh, 60 APs. And we could achieve the still very uh, competitive uh, air time shortages, the shortages to the active scanning. Okay, uh, in the uh, last thing, uh, we consider the, uh, the minimizing the uh, channel scanning uh, problem, minimizing the channel scan delay uh, with the aid of the Bluetooth advertising uh, packet. So we could uh, achieve the uh, minimum uh, energy consumption and minimum uh, scanning delay. Okay, uh, let's move on to the uh, part two. We have become aware of dynamic theory uh, and frequency hopping. Okay, uh, again, uh, we are working on the, uh, the device that has Wi Fi and VAD uh, capability. So there is some uh, cross technology uh, communication advantage. Also, they generate uh, cross technology interference. So by avoiding the interference, uh, we can achieve better uh, communication performance. The VLE is like uh, zero or milli uh, dB uh, transmission power uh, compared to VLE. Uh, Wi-Fi is like 100 uh, milliwatt transmission power, 100 times stronger uh, transmission power. So when they are competing, as I mentioned, always uh, the Wi-Fi will be the winners. So we want to the we want the VLE to avoid Wi-Fi beacon signal or Wi-Fi data communication signal uh, to achieve a VLE's performance. VLE use frequency hopping, uh, just use multiple uh, uh, channels to avoid this kind of interference. And Wi-Fi use the uh, carrier sensing approach uh, whenever the channel is either transmit and the collision happen, we transmit like that. VLE does not use the uh, carrier sensing technology, just hopping the channel to avoid this kind of interference. The existing solution is before for VLE is that just use adaptive frequency hopping. Find the, the good channel that can be used, and then uh, within the good channels, uh, frequency hopping will happen. So that is the, the current technology. But uh, in case of densely uh, populated, uh, densely deployed Wi-Fi network, as I mentioned, in case of hotspot, 40% uh, of the uh, airtime is used for the just beacon. Okay, so uh, we want to the avoid beacon and then Wi-Fi data communication if possible. Most of the time it is not easy, but we just do our best. Limitation of the frequency hopping approach is that the, uh, the good channel is not good permanently. It is not easy to find a good channel in densely uh, populated uh, Wi-Fi network. Uh, so the, because the, reason, the reason is that Wi-Fi generates the beacon signal every 100 milliseconds. So that means that a Bluetooth device uh, can predict the uh, beacon transmission. How can the BLE device uh, can predict the uh, Wi-Fi beacon signal? Uh, that is assumed here uh, by using the uh, passive Wi-Fi scanning. And the Bluetooth device here has the Wi-Fi uh, function also. So basically use the passive scanning and then <clears throat> by using the passive scanning, it connects the 
the BOI AP information and the transmission time. We collect that. Okay, collecting that information will be used for the frequency hopping. And that is the, the baseline of this idea. And then each uh, Wi Fi beacon consumes two milliseconds, and then uh, every 100 milliseconds, it generates a very strong coordination between uh, the APs uh, for sending the uh, Wi Fi beacon. So we have some room to improve the uh, avoid uh, Wi Fi beacon uh, in the perspective of uh, Bluetooth. Bluetooth is working in the 2.4 gigahertz band. It does not use the 5 gigahertz band. And basically, uh, there are 40, uh, 40 uh, Bluetooth channels. Each channel uh, used the 2 megahertz band. Wi-Fi used the 20 megahertz band, uh, 10 times wider uh, bandwidth compared to the Bluetooth. Uh, 2 megahertz band, then total of 80 megahertz uh, for the Bluetooth communication. And there are uh, 40 uh, Bluetooth channels on those. Uh, three channels are used for advertising. As I mentioned, advertising channel, uh, they are uh, separated in a frequency domain, uh, domain in frequency domain. And the 37 uh, data channel. Um, advertising channel will be used for the connection setup uh, between uh, Bluetooth master and slave, okay? So the, once the connection is set up, the data communication will happen, and the, uh, even though the uh, slave, uh, slave does not have any packet uh, to send to the master, uh, it will use the null packet to keep the association between master and slave. Once the a connection is set up between a mass and slave. And the connection setup is done through the advertising channel. As the, this slide shows, a connection event means the one part of communication between mass and slave. So just one step of uh, communication uh, that will repeat every connection interval. The connection interval depends on the application profile. Uh, it's like tens of milliseconds depending on the application. Uh, the slave can send the data to the master and master will send the data to the slave like that. <clears throat> and if there is no uh, data for communication, in the case null packet will be exchanged between uh, master and slave. Uh, beacon transmission time Condition via Wi Fi scanning. There is no uh, standard change, just uh, it uses the existing protocol. The station uh, that is with Wi Fi and Bluetooth capability uh, use passive scanning, and from that, uh, the, the station can collect the each uh, beacon transmission time uh, from the uh, each uh, AP. From the collected uh, beacon transmission time information, the station will decide the frequency hopping step. And uh, the, uh, the hopping pattern will be updated there. Okay, uh, for uh, beacon uh, transmission time and position, the B hop device, uh, break, uh, this is Bluetooth device actually, it, that is with the Wi Fi. And the B hub device collects the uh, each AP's uh, beacon transmission time uh, through passive Wi-Fi scanning. Okay, uh, by doing so, the the B hub device will create the um, the uh, table like this one: uh, AP and operating channel number and beacon duration and uh, beacon reception time and beacon interval like that. It will be created through the uh, passive Wi Fi scanning. That will allow the B Hub device uh, to predict uh, the, uh, what will happen in the future, near future, uh, for the uh, Wi Fi beacon transmission. 
okay, uh, frequency hopping pattern scheduling. The upper uh, upper map uh, indicates the uh, recon transmission and uh, no recon transmission. The uh, red colored one uh, is the uh, recon transmission collision with uh, the Bluetooth uh, transmission. And the green colored one indicates no recon. So that means the successful uh, Bluetooth transmission. So we want to find the uh, best uh, the uh, hopping set, uh, channel hopping set uh, that is with the minimum number of uh, collision. Collision here means the uh, Wi-Fi transmission and process transmission. And uh, from this, uh, we can select the best VLE channel. Uh, on the <coughs> uh, adaptive frequency hopping, use this kind of technology by doing this kind of thing, just uh, classify the Bluetooth channel as a good and best channel for the best. So we just go further. Uh, to use the frequency hopping pattern scheduling, we need to uh, <coughs> the, we need to decide uh, two uh, parameters here. For achieving the best performance, one is the transmit offset. Just adjust the VLE uh, 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 first transmission time. Once the first transmission time is decided, then every connection interval will be used uh, for the another transmission. And the another uh, parameter is connection interval. Connection interval depends on the application uh, profile. <coughs> Uh, the application profile allows some variation in case of uh, heart rate profile is allowed like uh, 50 milliseconds to be like 70 milliseconds. There is like choice of uh, 20 milliseconds, uh, 50 to the 70 milliseconds. Okay, so we have some choice uh, in deciding the connection interval and we have some choice uh, in uh, deciding the transmit offset by choosing the good transmit offset and good uh, connection interval, we can avoid Wi-Fi uh, beacon signal. Okay, this is the map. The uh, target instance is the, the first transmission time that we are thinking uh, in terms of the, uh, the Bluetooth. Okay, this is the situation. The, there will be collision with the Wi-Fi we have four collision here. If we uh, change the transmit offset, transmit offset is given within the connection interval. Within the connection interval, we can uh, vary the uh, transmit offset. By choosing the uh, appropriate uh, transmit offset, we can avoid the Wi-Fi beacon. Okay, uh, choosing the uh, appropriate uh, transmit offset and choosing the good uh, connection interval that will help the Bluetooth device to avoid the Wi-Fi beacon. Okay, so there is no collision in this case. Okay. Okay, one thing that we need to know here is that the most of the uh, Wi-Fi station like a cell phone, um, it uses power saving mode. That means uh, after hearing the beacon, most of the time it may sleeping because there, it does not have any packet to uh, unload to the uh, AC side. So every every uh, uh, the power saving interval or uh, interval uh, the the station will have some accumulated data and then after hearing the beacon, it will transmit. So the, that means after the beacon, there will be more chance of the data uh, communication signal from the station. So we want, the Bluetooth want to avoid that period if possible. The before the beacon is the better time uh, for the Bluetooth transmission. Okay, so we give some weight here. I mean, before the beacon signal, it's better than sending the Bluetooth signal after the beacon. Okay, so to avoid the 
the Wi-Fi uh, communication signal. So that's just one factor that we consider to be dangerous and safe like that. Just probabilistical uh, uh, thinking. Okay, and the as I mentioned, the Bluetooth device has two uh, parameters uh, for uh, choosing the best uh, channel uh, sequence. The one thing is the channel offset, uh, the transmission offset, and then the other one is the uh, connection interval. Okay, so uh, this kind of a thing, uh, the, this kind of decision will be made uh, every uh, scheduling window. Scheduling window here means that W means that W, uh, the connection interval. Uh, w is 10, that means every 10 connection interval, we will change the uh, transmission offset and the connection interval. Every uh, scheduling window, we will change that. Okay, so if the scheduling window is very large, in the case, the adaptiveness is very low. So the channel is changing very dynamically because uh, many devices, uh, many APs are around, so we cannot avoid uh, the kinds of dynamic uh, situation. So we want to the, uh, find the best uh, channel set uh, by adjusting the uh, scheduling window too. Okay. Okay. Uh, initially, we work on the simulation part first. Okay. We compare our proposal with the conventional. Uh, frequency hopping method and uh, the adaptive frequency hopping method on the packet uh, error uh, rate threshold is 0.5. And we have used the uh, AFH, adaptive frequency hopping uh, pattern by, by default. Okay. As you see uh, in the uh, graph here, we can see the compared to the conventional and adaptive frequency hopping, we have achieved the very uh, low uh, packet error rate and uh, the, uh, the number of number of retransmission packet per packet uh, retransmission. That means that uh, here the 0.5 means uh, to uh, have one successful uh, transmission, 1.5 transmission will be needed like that. Okay? We adjust the uh, scheduled window uh, from like 20 through 80. Uh, the best is the, uh, the scheduling window size of 20. So we use the uh, window size of 20 uh, for the uh, adjustment of uh, the transmit uh, offset and the, uh, the, uh, the connection interval uh, time. Okay. We tried the uh, number of APs of 30, and we tried the, with the uh, schedule window of 20, and the balanced traffic scenario and unbalanced traffic scenarios we worked on. And uh, compared to the conventional one, adaptive frequency RP1, uh, or actually the adaptive frequency RP1 uh, avoids the uh, uh, using a bad channel by doing so, there's some uh, performance improvement compared to the conventional frequency argument. But we uh, have the better uh, choice here, avoid beacon interference. So we can achieve the better performance. And also, as I mentioned, we use the weighting factor considering the uh, how safe in mode communication. Considering that, uh, we can have 3% more uh, reduction, but not much, but better than nothing. Okay, we implemented this one on the uh, Arsenal's uh, 9K and uh, uh, Nordic development here. Here, okay, It took some time actually, uh, especially the uh, synchronization problem is very hard to uh, uh, solve. So it took several months up to like one year or something. Okay, this is the implementation structure and uh, we performed the, uh, the configuration uh, in, the, uh, in our uh, building in uh, Submission University. And we uh, used the scheduling window of 20 
and transmission power of both uh, 0 milli uh, dB and 20 milli dB for Wi-Fi transmission. Okay, from this one, we found that uh, the VR achieved the like uh, uh, 3.5 uh, PR and compared to the uh, conventional frequency option one of like 10.5%. Uh, okay. And there are several factors uh, that affect the uh, real implementation performance. Uh, uh, compared to the simulation, we could find the less uh, performance gap here. So that comes from the uh, time synchronization problem and the unexpected uh, channel contention for the Wi Fi beacon. And uh, several other factors affect the performance. So in simulation, we could find the much better, but in real implementation, a slightly lower performance compared to the simulation. But that is reality, actually. So that is the I go here. Okay, uh, in summary, uh, in part two, I considered the uh, EHAR beacon aware Bluetooth transmission uh, frequency option based. And uh, we uh, implemented that one on desktop. Uh, desktop OS is the more flexible one, advanced one actually, compared to like a uh, key OS or tiny OS. And uh, through the real implementation simulation work, we could find that here works well. Okay, in conclusion, in this talk, I talked about OS Sync and VR. That is the basically cooperation between Wi Fi and Bluetooth uh, protocols. Uh, by using the, uh, this kind of cooperation technology, we could uh, achieve the Wi Fi Wi-Fi performance and the Bluetooth performance. Okay, that's it. Okay, any question? So um, it's a very nice talk. Thank you. Um, I was curious that there are lots of other IoT networks that are coming up. And for example, we've been working with LoRa, mm -hmm. and we wanted to coexist with Wi-Fi and BNB and other mm -hmm. kinds of networks. Has there been similar kinds of efforts with other types of IoT networks, long-range wireless, mm -hmm. um, low-power WAN, those mm -hmm. kinds of settings? Yeah, it depends on case case by case, actually. So I'm working on LoRa too. We use different uh, physical layer technology. So for the coexistence <laughs> between the LoRa and Wi-Fi, we need to consider in a different way. Okay, because we need to know the physical layer communication technology, and then based on that, we can design what is the best cooperation between those two protocol sets. It's a, so it almost seems like it's a pairwise thing, yeah, right. right? For every right. pair of networks, there is a difference. So if four of them are coexisting together, that makes it way more complex. Right, that is true. Uh, that, uh, that's why we consider the most popular one here, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and the different combination in the IoT. And that is the actual cellular bandwidth. It has no problem with that, and the LoRa, and what else do we have for the uh, online system communication? LoRa, uh, LoRa and the ZigBee, LoRa and ZigBee. Okay, LoRa and ZigBee and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, those are four uh, the popular uh, protocol stack. So this is our choice, but this is the most uh, effective one that I'm considering now, so, okay. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you.